So if you've had a chance to use GPT-5 Codex, you will know probably a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in this video. On one hand, I think it performs fairly well. On the other hand, it's hard to tell a actual difference from a day-to-day -day coding standpoint. There's many reasons for that, and I'm going to jump into that. But I will say I am a big fan of these tuned models. Quin3 Coder, honestly, was one of the first times where we actually saw a coding model tuned based on a larger model, and it performed really well. So I have a lot of high hopes for GPT-5 Codex. So the reason that I drew an arrow here is because I do think that refactoring is something that a lot of models struggle with. So when I see this, it makes me pretty excited that this might be a substantial leap in something that I need desperately because there's a lot of places in my code base that I need to spend the time on to refactor. I want to show you some side-by-side -side comparisons of doing a refactor with GPT-5 Codex and Claude Code and the outcome of that. But I think the biggest thing that I learned is that the code base for Codex CLI is more interesting than I thought. And part of the reason is, is for the longest time, and I actually have talked about this in another video and I feel kind of bad about this, because when I would see these PowerShell commands, it felt broken to me. It didn't feel like it was using native tool calling. So my, my mental model I had built about all this it's is been proven kind of to be wrong. And you could disagree or agree with how they've implemented this, but I actually kind of like the beauty in their approach in their source code. Now, I am by no means an expert of this code base. I brought the code base in. I did some digging. I used augment code to help me analyze parts of the code base. I went in and was reading some of the code. I'm going to show you some of that here. So if you want to skip ahead, that's totally fine. But if you're seeing things like PowerShell commands, that is by design. And I didn't realize that, and I've been using Codex for quite a while. In fact, I've actually got things that I've captured in the past. So this is one pre even the GPT-5 Codex model where I put the, I captured this because like, I don't understand why we're getting all these PowerShell commands. Now, if you're not on Windows, you will see something else there. I'll show you some examples of that here, but you can see here, PowerShell commands. But what's actually happening is there's a series of tools that are available in the CLI. And I believe, I believe these are also shared in the extension as well. I don't know that for a fact, but I believe that I need to spend more time with this code base, but here are the native tools. And most of the things that you actually like do for like searching or creating, that's all ran through shell. And the shell tool actually has a very specific kind of fallback mechanism. It prefers pwsh.exe or it falls back to powershell.exe. Now, I happens to, it so happens to be on my computer, I do not have pwsh installed. So it falls back to powershell.exe. And then if you get down, it'll eventually just use bash. And I do actually have git bash installed. I So you can, it that absolutely works on mine as well too. It is a very interesting kind of mechanism for things like if we if we take a look at some of these tool calls here for example like just this one this is just reading the file there isn't a git file tool it is using the shell command to load the content of that file into context very different than how like Ru code and those do it like it makes sense but when you kind of think about it, but it is, it's kind of interesting. And this is the Mac OS one. And to be clear, these are the tests that they're using, right? So this is just to kind of show you in a little bit, hopefully easier to recode, how they're kind of testing this, this type of stuff. Um, and, I, and I found it interesting because if you go into this file, uh, shell.rs, which again, they've rewrote the entire thing in Rust, it's actually pretty easy to read. You'll, you'll be able to see how all that works. So take a look at these native tools. I thought that was kind of interesting, but let's move on to some of the other stuff. The most important thing is GPT-5 Codex is so freaking slow. It makes it almost unusable to me. And I know there are people that will disagree with me on that. And they're like, oh, it doesn't matter if it's right. But let me show you the simple test here. This is a pool game. I'll show you the results of this here in a minute, but this is a pool game. Should be relatively simple. This is medium. 
GPT-5 codex, seven minutes and 38 seconds. This is GPT-5 medium, two minutes and 24 seconds. So roughly, you know, three times the amount of time. Three times. Let me show you some of the pool games that actually were made here. So this particular one is GPT-5 high. This is codex, the so GPT-5 high codex. I do like that you actually can place the ball. I think they did a great job laying out the pool table, which I think is awesome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I can never remember which way to do this, but you can see the physics are not good. Now, this is high. So let's go to the second one. The second one is going to be code, Codex Low. So this is going to be the low version that's actually been, been created. So there you can see my, my charging shot power there. Surprisingly, it has some of the best physics, to be fair. I think that's really good. And the ball actually went in. It captured that correctly. So kind of interesting that Codex Low did a better job on that screen. That's only one data point, so we can't judge everything off of that. The next one we have here is Codex Medium. Now, I would kind of expect this to be, uh, I'm assuming it's going to be that way. Again, good physics. Uh, but actually, no, I would not say good physics because it's there's not enough um, friction on it. The balls are just bouncing forever. So I take back everything. All the balls are going in the hole. Uh, so yeah, it's just going to keep bouncing around forever. Now... The last one is GPT-5 medium. Notice something here. So GPT-5 medium is the only one that didn't really even get the position of the balls correctly. So I find that fascinating. Uh, and this is pretty repeatable in my test here, whose physics I would say are totally broken. Some of the other ones, you know, maybe they, it's not a friction. So it's it's interesting to me because in my like brief testing of side-by-side -side things like that, it's cl pretty clear that the Codex GPT-5 versions are better, but at the cost of significant, significant slowdown. And it makes it hard um, to actually really test this in, an, in a real code base. And I'll show you some of those reasons because if I look at Codex low, two minutes and 32 seconds, I wish I would have discovered this two days ago, like when it first came out, just to be totally honest. I have done most of my testing in medium, and I felt like this is actually on par with the speed of medium. And I've actually been happy using GPT-5 medium speed. I felt like that was a good middle ground. But Codex Low right now is, is falling about the medium speed of regular GPT-5. And this I found also to be interesting is that Codex High in this particular test consistently never actually was much more. It's like within the same range of Codex GPT-5 medium. And the result of it, I don't know, you you saw what I kind of gave you. I don't know if it's substantially different, uh, but this is another thing that I kind of wish I would have known a couple days ago. But some of this is driven by demand. So I do hope that this will get better. GPT-5 Codex is higher than forecasted. OpenAI has done an excellent job at they reset our limits because of this. They're communicating fairly well. I just want to say thank you, OpenAI, for doing that. Unlike some others in the industry, I think this is the type of stuff we need. Um, they do say it's running two times slower. So if you think about that and we were to kind of compare this, you know, we're at 3x here. So I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's by standard a little bit slower. But I would say maybe 2x might be a little bit optimistic. I think it's probably a little bit worse than that, honestly. Uh, the, here's an example. I thought this was hilarious. So Codex worked for an hour to remove a single line of code. Now, <laughs> I, I will say, uh, to be fair, this is actually removing two lines of code. <laughs> but I get, I get the point. I'm being funny here, right? Because uh, they removed a blank line and then uh, a, a duplicate line here. So it, I thought that was great, but I did have situations where I would have it thinking for 15, 20, 30 minutes and very little would actually get done. I also saw some posts from people saying that it doesn't feel much better than pure GPT-5 high. I kind of agree, but I think part of it is the speed because I can't, I can't feel kind of the back and forth on that because when things fail, uh, it's really hard to kind of iterate on things. So here's the codex medium, Here's the GPT-5 medium. You can see the difference here. Here's the high one, kind of shows that some of the physics are working. And the low one I thought actually worked incredibly, incredibly well. Now in my actual code base, this is just, uh, so you can see down here, GPT-5 codex medium, probably hard to read. It, it's hard to show this stuff on video, but you can see here that I actually, 
uh, was working through some UI stuff and it did a good job not breaking things. So it built this whole section for me. I asked it to do an empty state. It did a great like looking empty state for me. And even though it took a while, it looks good. It did what I wanted to. So it was functioning. But there were times here where you can see here, I say you broke it. So my chat input area doesn't show anymore. So on another screen where I was working on that, it actually did break it. So when you're waiting 10 or 15 minutes and something breaks, you get more frustrated than if this was like a two minute task. I'm gonna be totally honest in that. That's why it's hard for me to give like a full analysis on this at the speed it's currently at. But I would say objectively, I think it's a great model. Subjectively, without speeding it up, without getting it to be faster, it becomes very hard for me to recommend wanting to use that and using your, your, your limited codex bandwidth that you actually have uh, to actually utilize it. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about planning and refactoring. So planning, what I wanted to do was build a plan to refactor a monolithic file. This file is just, you know, it's one of those things where a lot of stuff kind of operates around it. Things are too intertwined. And the one downside, I've talked about this a lot with Codex, is there is no good planning mode. And because of that, I have to kind of prompt it for that. So I did the same thing in Claude code. I did not use plan mode. I prompted it for the mode, the same prompt, just to see how it would work. This is the plan it came up with. Uh, to show you the results of that, it actually created four new composables, two components. I could argue that this is actually reasonable refactoring. It took 29 to 32 minutes. The reason I say 29 to 32 minutes, because I apologize for this, I looked at it and it was 28 minutes and 30 seconds. I stepped away for a minute. I came back. My timer was at 32 minutes. But for some reason, uh, you know, we don't see the final time down here. So, so it's like, I just know that between 29 and 32 minutes that this has actually ended up hitting the end. It gives you a ballpark, right? Not perfect. It did use a lot of context. Look at that, 52% of context left to over, that'd be what, 108, 90,000 in the context window. And then 477,000 tokens used. Now in Claude Code, I would say Claude Code gave me a better plan, but I found it kind of weird the way it broke it into weeks. Um, like I am going to actually go through week by week and do this when I'm, when really I'm just going to say, Claude, you go do it. Now, before I get into all of this, so the result of this was we ended up with a 22% reduction in code, four new composables and two new components. Now, comparing that to Claude Code, which did a funny plan in my opinion here, because what it did is it gave me a week by week task list, basically of things that need to be done giving me a list of all the composables that need to be done. Well, there's some of the components, some advanced features, business logic, and polish. So it wanted to really do a massive refactor. Now, the result of this, 86% reduction in code, five new composables, seven components, one type. It took 29 minutes. I actually got a better timer on that one because I was there for it. It did actually finish with a bunch of issues that were present in VS Code. Here is the actual files that it actually generated here. Honestly, I actually really am happier with the result of how this was broken up, but nothing worked. And when I did do some iterations on it, it's still like very broken. Whereas what I would say on the GPT-5 codec side, it worked great. Nothing, it, no issues in VS Code. All the composables worked, all my tool calling worked. You know, granted I did chop it off, I'm just doing a partial, but my input, was down here properly. It's all great, no issues. So it's one of those things where I would say GPT-5 did a better job in the same amount of time in the fact that it reduced it some, broke it out some, and it worked, versus Claude Code that was actually very aggressive, broke up a touch, did a massive reduction. And I would say if this would have came out working, my mind would have been freaking blown. I think it would have been incredible. So where does that leave us? I think it leaves us with eval, so I'll talk about this just a little bit. Now, current GPT codex medium comes in at 24,950. I would say that is basically within, that's close enough to say that it's pretty equal on my evals. That was ran on 8-30-2025 with GPT-5 medium. This is, this is done with the codex CLI. I did not test the extension with my uh, evals, but typically they're within runtime variants, at least from what I saw doing them last month. So, so 
on one hand, from an eval perspective, there isn't much difference. I would, I would say we've got some kind of objective measurement that the, the, right now the model's just a lot slower. So it's really hard to get that like vibe feel for it. Like, is it actually a model that you can kind of like work with on a day basis? And then subjectively, I would say it is better in lots of ways. I think it, I think it did a better job doing the pool game that I showed you compared to GPT-5. Now, is that going to always be the case? I don't know. Like if I ran this a thousand times and what the variance was, I don't know. But I would say that when I did them side by side, again and again and again with the same prompt, it was clear that the Codex one did work better. And it was also clear that it's a very competent model with my evals, but it just takes a lot longer to run. So I think where I'm at right now is until we really figure out the speed to where it's comparable with GPT-5, I think you should probably just use GPT-5 Codex Low and because it's going to be at least about the same as GPT-5 Medium, at least at the time of testing this. This could change in an hour. And I found Codex Low to actually be good. I found it to be fine. I actually enjoy working with it. It's fast enough. So I would, I would give you that recommendation. I would not be spending your time right now until they figure out the speed thing with medium and high. I do not think the quality difference is there uh, at the cost of three times the speed. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts. Please leave them in the comments below. I would love to understand kind of where you're at with GPT-5 Codex. I'm a huge fan of these types of fine-tuned models, but you know, it, it really comes down to like a combination of things. It's not just eval scores. It's how the how it feels using the model. It's the speed of the model. It's the cost of the model. All of those things kind of play a big picture in it. Would love to hear everyone's perspective on it because I am by no means going to claim that I am 100% right about all this. But I do know one thing I am right about is that until they speed it up, I'm not going to be able to use this, at least the medium one, full time. But I am going to, for the rest of today, spend my time on Codex Low. Until next time, everyone. Love you guys. Peace out.